Welcome to our tutorial about using dimensions. I finished my drawing on the part layer. Now before we start applying dimensions, let's open the layer palette. I want to create a dimension layer. New layer. And let's rename it. Let's call it dimensions, dim. Let's use red color. Okay. Line type, let's leave it as continuous. All right, let's close the palette and go to the Annotate tab. Here we've got a number of dimensions to choose from. Let's start with Linear. Let's toggle Ortho Mode on. Right-click on Snap Mode and deselect Quadrant. Right-click and deselect the midpoint also. Let's select this point, this point, and click somewhere here. And here is our first dimension. This type of dimension is called a linear dimension. Let's select it again. Select this point and this point. And here is our second dimension. Let's select linear dimension again. We'll select this point and this point and click somewhere outside. When I move the mouse up, I see the horizontal dimension. When I move the mouse sideways, I see the vertical dimension. Let's click somewhere here. Let's put another dimension here using the same points, and click here. As you probably noticed, our dimensions were supposed to be red, but I see them in black. That's because I created them on the wrong layer. And let's select the dimension layer from the layer drop-down menu. Let's right-click and deselect everything. And let's go back to the dimension layer. Back to the annotate tab now. The next dimension we're going to look at here is the align dimension. Let's specify our first point, this point, this point, and drag our cursor down. There's our dimension. Since it looks just like a linear dimension, you might be wondering what the difference is. It looks just like a linear dimension because the line I dimensioned is a horizontal line. Let's try a couple different points place my dimension somewhere here. Another way to describe the difference between these two dimension types, linear and aligned. The linear dimension gives you the horizontal and vertical distance between two points. The aligned dimension, on the other hand, gives you the real or true distance between two points. The as the crow fly version, so to speak. Okay, let's take a look at our next dimension type, the angular dimension. To create an angular dimension, we select a first line and then a second line, and here is the angle between them. Let's place another angular dimension here. Select this line and this line. I can place this angular dimension here, here, over here, or down here. Let's drop it right here. Let's create another angular dimension now. This time select this arc. In this case, we only need the one line, of course. Let's drag the dimension out right about here. Let's say I want to place an angular dimension between these two points along this circle. Let's activate the Dimension tool first. Now activate the Snap to Intersection tool. Select the circles and place the point right about here. Now I need to place a second point. I'll select the end point of this line and place the angular dimension right here. When you place a dimension in a situation like this, you need to be sure that you're selecting the circle but not the line. Let me take a minute to demonstrate what I mean. I'm going to select the intersection instead of selecting the circle. I get this line. Now see what happens? I don't have the rubber band effect from the center of the circle like I had in my previous example. I need to do the second step, select the circle, and then step three, select the line. And see what's happened here? I've selected the circle in the wrong place. Okay, let's undo this. The next dimension we'll use here is arc length. I'll select this arc and place the dimension right out here. This is basically a linear dimension along the arc. The next dimension we're going to look at is Radius Dimension. Let's select this circle 
We'll place the dimension somewhere here. Activate the radius dimension again. Select this arc and place the dimension right about here. Now let's take a look at dimensioning diameters. Let's select this circle and place the dimension out here. As you probably noticed, I've got a duplicate dimension here. AutoCAD didn't warn me about this, as most CAD software does, so keep that in mind. Now we're going to take a look at continue and baseline dimensions. Let's move on to my next example. And I'm going to zoom in a little. In order to use baseline and continue dimensions, I need to create a linear dimension first. Let's create the dimension between these two points and place it right here. And between these two points, one, two, and let's place it out here. Actually, let's undo that. We're going to create a different dimension between this point and this point. Let's place it right about here. Okay, here we have the continue and baseline dimension options. Let's look at continue first. Notice AutoCAD picks up from the point where I last dimensioned. Let's select this point, this point, this point, and this point. After I'm done, let's right-click and enter. You might have noticed that the command is still active. AutoCAD asks me to select the continue dimension. Let's select this one, this point, this point, this point, and this point. Right click and enter. Let's click Escape to exit the command. Now let's delete these dimensions with a window selection. Let's take a look at the baseline dimension option now. Once again, we'll start by creating a linear dimension. Let's drop it up here. Now select baseline. Once again, AutoCAD picks up from my last dimension. We're going to select a few more points. Right click, enter. Now press escape to exit the command. And here is our baseline dimension. This concludes our tutorial about using dimensions.